Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from me, your host A2 vs 2 on McGeckens, yes indeed, McGeckens, not Duclair We've been having a lot of games on Duclair when it's 2 vs 2 But no more, no longer It shall be an interesting fight as The British under Tanako and Americans under GG Big Tiger Fighting for the 4th Armoured Division with British Armoured inf armored and Infantry support from some brigade Clash against the forces of, yes indeed, Latrodectus Unloaded and a scheme Fighting for the rather quickly assembled Panzer Brigade Latrodectus As they try to break into the fillets and open up the gap once more to allow further German troops to escape Will they succeed? Or will the Panzer Brigade Latrodectus burn up? We shall find out, and we are seeing dual Kettenkrats right here, no shrimp markings for Latrodectus or a skim. Panzer Grenadiers on the way for Latrodectus. Barracks there, so no weapon support center from GTB Big Tiger, and also at the edge of the base, lovely to see. Looks like Tanako though seems to be having a bit of a tea break. First reacting within about 30 minutes, seconds, not 30 minutes, that would be <laughs> bloody terrible, but still. You know, try not to stay AFK when sort of, you know, auto-matching. But the reconcentration finally moving. The tea break is over, no more biscuits. Panzer Grenade is marching out, Gear 43 is in hand. And yes, the Panzer Brigades were sort of a more of an organised thing, but there were also some which were more hastily organised to whatever was available, and they'd usually end up with names after the commander. So in this case, you know, Panzer Brigade, Latch Deck, just one fictional, which sort of makes sense, like a Kampfgruppe... Uh, Hans Lea, which we also saw in the Comedy Fuse campaign, somewhere also named after the divisions of the Kampfgruppers that is they were formed from, if they were hastily battled down to be nothing but really a division. Panzer is advancing though from the Panzer Brigade, Latrodectus, equipped with the finest recruits and shiny panzers. But will that be enough? Or will the lacking of the troops be a problem? Getting crowd though here, running into problem. We've already seen Scorched Earth from a scheme that's pretty early on. Will the British set off the booby trap? Are they aware? Yes, indeed. Yes. And there's the thing to note about Ketten Crowd booby traps they're pretty damn slow. Little vital thing I'd like to note or point out. Three Panzer Grenadiers out for Lato Dectus. We're seeing only one team, two Ketten Crowds, but a Logistic company up for a scheme. While well, the Panzers continue up north, engineers coming under fire from the Panzer Grenadiers. With more moving up to assist. While well, the Allies are pulling more towards the west, the booby trap really didn't do much to stop the advance of the British Allies to the 4th Armoured. Kitten Crowd also secures a bit around here. Now we're seeing a Panzer Port command up, he's probably going for a swift anti-tank half-tank, although that's pretty damn early, I mean... Or it could be he might be going for a Panzer IV or a Hotchkiss, but still, if he goes for an anti-tank half-tank, that's pretty damn early. Anyways, fuel point being secured by the Americans, taken away from the grasp of the Panzer Elite, while pretty much he's still focusing there. I mean, this seems a bit of an odd move, I mean, there's no real effort towards these, while of course he pretty much ought to be sort of aware now that... Well, the Allies are focusing pretty heavily on the West. Perhaps he shouldn't be trying to, you know, focus much of his attention towards them, rather than securing what he can in the East. And an engineer gets dropped as he probably runs into more Panzer Grenadiers, or probably even the same Panzer Grenadiers, while the others are sort of hanging back here, securing more munitions, driving up a witch right through the map, in fact, rather containing early on the Allies. Scout car rhyming, Ken Crowd number two in problems as well, and looks like he's actually lost the first one. That's not a good start for us. Oh, second cat and car. Do be careful with them, a scheme. You know, they cost money. And actually, a fun thing, but there was one of the, I believe, one Panzer Brigade actually had a company of cat and crats as a reconnaissance. That was actually quite fun, you know, alongside motorcycles and such. And it looks like another scout car is going to go down. I mean, yes, they are sort of like armor cars, but like the other one, they have pretty thin armor. And unlike the armor car, their main gun isn't that impressive. It's better than the infantry half-track mech gun, but that's about it. So, you, you know, do be careful. They are also expensive. 
Metro Dectus rushing towards an armor car, trying to sort of carry things through here, perhaps save his teammate from his um, slightly well thought out actions. Never mind, I wonder how he's supposed to go to get repair that with only one Panzer Grenade team. And he's gone for Scorched Earth, so there's no something like, say, Luftwaffe troops to help him repair. That's also a bit of an issue, I'd say. Let's predict his pants goes continuing in the fight though. More Gewehr 3 Gewehr 43 <laughs> being equipped. An attempt to overwhelm the Americans with superior firepower. Looks like one rifle has gone down, although the light cover isn't quite yeah, helping. And you going for the munitions. No real efforts really here to sort of secure this part. Most of this so far has been f here fighting the Panzer lead of a scheme and now they seem to just sort of stop moving which is something you have to be careful about they could have pressed on much more aggressively but now of course they're giving a scheme time to sort of regroup and counterattack although it's going to be a bit hard counterattacking with those scout cars and that's for sure rather than getting pushed back though Panzer Grenade is once more proving their worth rather than getting suppressed also quick note I have uploaded finally the sort of latest skin back combinations you know just go to the front page, check on the channel details, the link should be there. Assault one was being equipped right there, of course, Sturm Gewehr 44. A rather novel invention by them, pretty much the world's first assault rifle. More scout cars on the way. I mean armored cars. Scout cars are there, but there might be four more of them. This one just securing this munition point, which not a bad idea, that's only giving him plenty and also not ensuring that one getting wrecked lots of logistic upgrades I suppose that's fair enough Panzer goes waiting here Assault Wives might be aiding to Assault and we're seeing a machine gun in place from up here and BARs for the rifle but again he's being a bit cautious not really attacking towards the center try not to be too defensive with the Americans early on Bren Gunners now looks all like all the British are retreating while the American hold on like a tiger. Not a tank, but you know, the animal thing. Rifle though quickly running away. Armored car, armored cars, no, half track, armored cars, and scout cars, and Panzer Grenades with sort of proving to be a bit of an issue. We have gained the momentum on the field. Perhaps having to pull back to that Vickers machine gun emplacement for safety and slightly heavier firepower. Or will they just outright retreat? We are seeing a field support truck that are arriving for Tanako and the Commonwealth. And it's actually time to have a look at our skim. What is our skim up to? More scout cars. And a Panzer Support Command upgrade. Should be interesting to see what will come out of that. A Hotchkiss Panzer IV. We shall find out soon enough. And moving in against that Vickers machine gun emplacement, firing away with that tiny anti tank gun mounted. Not really effective against any armor by this stage of the war, although I suppose there was a minor upgrade. What special charge it could fire that could really up close do some damage, but that was about it. Otherwise, it was basically more used like an infantry gun in this case. This sort of half pack was actually a platoon leader vehicle. So that's a little fun fact there. Viper moving up here, opening up on another scout car, which is a bit on its own and a bit overwhelmed. Not a lot of support for it again. All now the Axis efforts are here in the west, being tied down with the Vickers machine gun emplacement. And trying to take points, getting mortared in fact. Well, that mortar emplacement up here and looks like he's pretty much prepared a nice little fortress within the Bocage. The Panzer Brigade though fights on. More armored cars arriving to deal with these riflemen. Scout car goes down. More wrecks for our skim. Not really doing too well there, our skim. You might also want to consider getting more infantry, you know, more infantry. Instead, Lanzo Dexter seems to be providing that now with additional Luftwaffe troops. Well, the scout cars are getting constantly mortared. Fuel point secure, that's providing more fuel, that's good. And the armored car is going to be a roaming death squad. For now. 
Although it's rather interesting to note that doesn't really seem to be having much, except he's spamming sappers. I mean, why not a captain? And I suppose also just as importantly, why not get some Stuart tanks? I mean, uh, quite a few. I mean, then quickly overwhelm that light anti-tank half-track, knock it out, then deal with the rest. I mean, it's not exactly, you know, uh, high caliber tactics, I'd imagine. And Scout Cup running into problem with those motor rounds, do be careful. But looks like Latrodectus is relying a lot on the Luftwaffe. In fact, another team has arrived. And besides the Luftwaffe field divisions, which were sort of the larger formations, uh, there was also the flak units, and while they might not directly have fought, it was not uncommon for the Wehrmacht to basically use them as replacements for other divisions which had suffered losses. Later on in the war, after sort of things were realized that Göring was a bit of a fat fop who didn't really properly train the units, and thus some measures were made, but still, even then, some were just used as immediate replacements on the battlefield. The 352nd, for example, experienced that quite a bit in Normandy, which in short, it all of a sudden had a mix of Reichsarbeit, Dienst, Kriegsmarine, and Luftwaffe troops, and troops from other divisions who were just on leave in that sector. Another Vickers machine gun replacement. I do feel that Hinako is spending too much resources on that. Not enough on fighting troops, like, say, a Stuart. Also looks like he's gotten a 25-pounder gun up. Right from here out in the open versus Luftwaffe troops and Panzers with assault rifles and heavy cover. That's not really the best situation. More Luftwaffe join in the fight. GG Big Tiger really needs to be careful. Some are trying to flank but they're quickly getting slowed down. F quite a bit but they're still in sort of either light or heavy cover. Light or no cover. Mortar rounds joining and a Panzer IV has arrived. Right from taking heavy losses. Luftwaffe troops turning through them. How to fire. But where? Towards here, getting a... Did he seriously just use an artillery strike on a bloody Kettenkrat? Or something like that? Come on. I mean, you could have knocked out a lot here by Latrodectus, you know, trying to work with your teammate. We are seeing a tank deal for GT Big Tiger though, and a Panzer IV versus that, although... One has to remember that Hellcats did have pretty thin armor. And a Panzer IV can reasonably fit and knock that out if he's not careful. In particular, if he locked down and gets increased rate of fire. And there we go. All of a sudden, increased rate of fire. This Hellcat is in what you call trouble. And the Panzer IV was sort of used late in the later stages of the war, although not quite intentionally. That was sort of more because they didn't have anything else. And I suppose this Panzer Brigade might have been equipped with some. Perhaps a company because they couldn't get anything else right away, lacking Panthers and all that. Although the Panthers were sort of mostly equipped, well the Panzer Brigades were mostly equipped with one type of Panzer, the Panther, and I was was infantry and not a lot else. In fact, they were rather lacking in support units. And the fun thing about that, the Panzer Elite, besides you know reflecting a Kampfgruppe from say Margaret Garden, can also sort of you know nicely reflect a Panzer Brigade. Another Panzer for the arriving, opening up. Oh dear, lots of sappers though, be careful. Get armored skirts before you get the machine gun. I mean, he's not really good anyways. The only ones good for the Vam axes are basically the ones in the Stug and the Geschützwagen. And the Stug, oh dear, another Kettenkrat goes down. Bloody awful mess, that. Our Atlas are pushing through there, Hellcat leading the way. Could consider getting a 50 caliber machine gun, actually. It's surprisingly effective. It can actually do quite a bit of damage to sort of regular troops like Luftwaffe or Volkswagen. It's not entirely sure guns, panzer guns and such. Oh dear scout car. Another one also heavily damaged. A skim. Could you at least not bother with say some a comfortable company and then upgrading your panzer guns with expert re expert repairs at least repair them? You're just wasting them like that. That's not very nice. And not very efficient either. Oh, the yeah, nice hit right there on the Panzer IV. Looks like these five men are running into a problem. As it moves in, opens up with its 75mm low velocity gun. Which was sort of the how the original was, except armored skirt, without the armored skirts. Was basically designed to sort of support infantry and assaults, knock out heavily positions, and draw south of that. It could also end up dealing with armor and it eventually sort of ended up as the Panzer IV, we know it. With a high velocity gun. Panzer versus Rifemen. And they do manage to push them away with their assault rifle might. Hellcat 
though does try to hunt them down, but does seem to be quite having any luck with it. British hanging Mac might want to move, and I do believe we're hanging a 17 pounder gun. Help opening up on the Panzer Grenadiers. Also a bit of action here. Panzer 4 on the hunt, but can't quite seem to catch anything. And of course, if a Hellcat was to hunt it down, it might end up with a very short lifespan. And what is this? Panthers. Panther galore. The first arm of the Panzer Brigade has arrived. And we are seeing Canadian Infantry Artillery Doctrine. Not Infantry Doctrine, although they use the icon of it for the Americans. Which of course means he can now call in officer artillery, creeping barrages, increased ranges of artillery with the supercharged rounds. Panzer Force now roaming together. Achtung, Achtung, Panzermarsch! As Panthers also roaming up, a mighty armored fist of the Panzer Brigade Latodectus, promoted after his other successes, in particular getting more defeatist commanders to realize his glories of the Wehrmacht and to ensure victory. Looks like another Hellcat could be going down. And what is this? I believe we are seeing Overwatch. Yes, indeed. And that is actually air burst rounds, something the Axis also had, I believe. But in this case, only for the bridge chase, like right, for grenades, although again, all sides had it. But also, note, not really effective against tanks. It's mostly against infantry, and in the actual war, it was also eff effective against, you know, tanks with, say, open top, or say, tank destroyers, you know, with no real top there. For example, these Hellcats would have been pretty susceptible to air burst rounds. That's another story entirely. Panzer Force roaming. Panthers waiting. Armor cars in support. Charge of the British, huh? For king and country and biscuits. Well, BTT TikTok. Big Tiger has gone for tank armor We're doctrine. More points. tank destroyers. Even one with veterancy. And a quick retreat from the British. Barely any losses, but they do not dare face the Panthers and the armored cars. Which I suppose is a completely understandable reaction. Hellcats are moving in, has to be careful. Two Panthers are not to be messed with. To put it mildly, oh dear, one looks like one Hellcat could be going down, but looks like Veterans 1 might be saving it as Veterans 1 pretty much for all Allied armor and vehicles increases speed. And speed is of the essence when you're the Americans versus German armor. Mines probably. Not entirely sure who's talking about what. Except in involved mines, and we've not really seen a lot from the Americans. Quite interesting enough, or even the British with the sappers. Not a lot, though, from the Axis, except if, well, he could call in butterfly bombs, or he could, this fellow could get a half track and lay down mines himself. But it is time for the mid game analysis. It's a bit of a standoff, although currently the Axis are holding most of the map, they hold most of the units, most of the armor, although. Our scheme is not looking so great. I mean, too many scout cars, not enough actual frontline fighting units. That's a real problem. And if the British rather realize this, and the Allies generally, though, it could end up with those things getting knocked out, and then they're turning on Latrodectus, and then he has to hold all of it. I mean, again, try to ensure, you know, both sides have enough frontline units. Failure to do that could easily, easily result in a lot of problems, and that, well, I fear, could happen here. And of course, Latrodectus, plenty of Panzergrenadiers and some Luftwaffe troops. Hooray! With a nice little Luftwaffe helmets. Blue and with the Luftwaffe stamp. Allies, on the other hand, do need to push forwards. They knew, do need to get armor. I mean, the British commander is relying too heavily on blobs and artillery. I mean, considering getting a bit of a steward light tank, but now he needs to consider getting his fireflies out to deal with the Panthers. And if. GC wants to sort of pull off his Hellcats, he needs more, but I also recommend getting Shermans with me up guns upgraded. So there you go, let's return to the fight. He might also want to consider getting, you know, Pershings. Though he's going for the right hand side, so of course he might be homing for Clypeys. We'll of course have to see how things roll out for the Panzer Brigade versus the 4th Armoured. And it's British support, or well, in this case, I suppose Canadian support, since it is Canadian Royal Artillery. 
Engineers running away. The Panzer is once more proving to be a tenacious foe. We are seeing a logistic company going up. Perhaps increased squad sizes for his Panzer Grenadiers. That would help. British charging through down the centre here. They only really had the pier since they had no bazookas, and I don't believe they received any as lend lease. That was more the Russians, I think. Enemy unit down. But the pier was a sort of a funny weapon. It was more of a spring projected weapon rather than rockets. Could fire in arcs. And certainly wouldn't give it away, but it was actually highly impractical in many ways. And certainly not a favoured weapon. But it's rather what the British had. Armour cars doing some terrible things with these American chaps were a bit incautious, you know, moving out in the open road. Being taken by the enemy. We are seeing a bit of fighting here with the Hellcats going up against the dreaded Luftwaffe squad. How shall the Hellcats ever survive that? Oh dear, locking down right in front of all those sappers, and again, you know, try to be careful. Looks like a sapper team went down, but a Panzer Falter went down. We're seeing artillery, lots of artillery. And lots of sappers dying. Oh dear, again, you know, rule of thumb, you know, try to avoid blowing up. He just lost three sapper teams with Piets. That's not cheap. That's, I mean, one sapper team is 320, so that's about... Let's say about 960 manpower. That's almost a thousand. He got one, but that was about it. And again, you know, as Americans never tried to fight Panthers frontally, they were built and trained, you know, fight from the front. So if you fight a Panther from the front, you're fighting it its way. In this case, pull out the Hellcat, straw it out into the open, then try to circle it. A Hellcat will do more damage if you can hit the rear armor. And the Panzer in rear war had pretty thin armor on the side and the rear. Scout can trouble. Another help set of Hellcats, in fact, replaced. More Hellcats also that way. And now he's wreaking havoc on the Scout cars, which are defenseless. And again, munitions. lots of manpower that way he wasted. A scheme, though, now getting some it's Panthers. Beck Tiger needs to get his pan Hellcats moving to fight against the other cats. And these rifle. Oh dear, wasting riflemen like that. Hellcats ready, Luftwaffe troops have to bring in for a few repairs. Hellcats joining up. Quite a bit of resource being floated, no supply upgrades, but you know, perhaps getting more Hellcats. I mean, if you're at least going to get that many, Hellcats. get some more. Then, of course, don't try to fight the Panthers in a slug out fight, try to get past them, hit their rear armor. Again, finding Panthers from the front is fighting to the Panthers' favor. Unless you've got more fireflies than them, I suppose. Oh, a skim! Why did you change targets? Never change targets. Pa artillery fire on them. Hellcats getting replaced, but even then, some are going to be lost. More Hellcats down, and only two can be replaced at a time. That was not really going well. Now the Hellcat out of control. More sappers. A bit too keen on spamming those, I fear. But a panther finally bites the dust. Small victory for the Allies, although three are still remaining. Actually, that was a full platoon, I believe. Well, we see now one short one panther. Panther is pushing forwards. More artillery. Mere artillery. And. More artillery. Oh, goodness gracious. Panzer is getting pushed back while the islands are pushing back the Brits. Luffa of the troops just calmly repair. Oh! Oh, never mind. They tried to calmly repair, then they got killed, most of them. In unnatural ways. Looks like Askim, though, is getting a Hummel. Svera self self like the pan. Artillery. Oh, where is it? There we go. And the Hellcats are breaking through. Another scout car down. Panthers trying to hunt them. A little circus there. Again, trying to get past them. Try not to fight them from the front. Hit them in the rear. And right there, notice, I mean, that shot right there did a lot more damage than the previous one. Again, no, a lot of damage. More Allied War Machine. Could be a... Yes, Panther down. 
Panther down, Brug up. Being behind only Latrodectus with any Panthers at all. Oh dear, Hummel discovered. Get it out of there. To safety. No. Oh, there we go. Latrodectus saves the day once more. Panther is though not doing to Wilt's stack out down through them. That of course soon means Fireflies. And more Hellcats. Rather looks like the Americans have given up most of it and just the spamming Hellcats. Though not really using any tactics with them, which is not really to his advantage. We can now the Fireflies are riding. This could prove to be a slightly larger issue if combined with the Hellcats. Panzer in trouble. And Eskim's only. Panzer goes badly. It's practically some of his only few units left. He's got two scout cars and a Hummel. Oh, he has no Panzer Grenadiers either. Not really good either. I would certainly not recommend people playing like a skim. Too much of a gimmick, too much scout cars galore and then Panthers. Whereas Latter Day to stuff rather more diverse for us now with Fortune Yegas joining this port assault. Perhaps found during this push towards the Falaise Gap. And quickly ordered back in the fight. We are losing ground. Fighting on against the British. Now with FG-42s. Devastating weapon which could in fact work like an assault rifle. Funnily enough. Sapper's in trouble. Now it could be the Bren Gunners. Careful Bren Gunners. There we go, getting slaughtered viciously. Victory for the Fortune Jäger. For now though, another infantry action pushes up. What is left behind here? Could it be a Bren? No, it's a BAR. Captain Veterancy free, actually, that's quite nice. Rarely see that. Hellcats pushing towards the base. That Dex is pretty much doing the most of the fighting. All oh, the pressure is on me, nothing new, yes indeed. We've seen that in previous replays. And that is a bit the threat of your danger of you know playing random two versus twos. And also in the end, why I stopped playing them myself, I just couldn't take it anymore. There's too many Oh terrible players. Who could not be taught. We're tearing through right here, the base of the Panzer Brigade. Oh dear, dual fireflies moving in. They will also have to be careful. Without the f command tank though, they are going to be s less strong. Main gun destroyer, that's going to be one firefly down. No, Latrodex has changed his targets. Oh dear, he should have gone for the other one, he should have knocked that out. And one firefly does go down though, and I think this one might even... Yeah, it doesn't make it out of there either. Bad move right there by the British. Hellcats losing to more Panthers. By a scheme, and let's go have a look at Latrodectus. We've certainly got more than a scheme has at the moment. <coughs> and the Hellcats running straight into Latrodectus as Panthers, all veterancy free. With offensive and defensive veterancy. Looks like they might be making it, although currently most of the map is American allied. They have been able to really take advantage of the axe being pushed back. And another scout car goes up. I would definitely not ask for a skim to be promoted in any way or manner. Forcing Jaegers move on, their own, out on their own little mission. But well, they need to push forward soon, or all might be lost. A skims Panthers getting repaired. More Hellcats getting ready. And looks like these engineers are in a slight trouble with those Forge Mjäger. There's nothing new about some mighty Fortune Jäger. They were some of the most, most elite troops, although later in the war, the Fortune Jägers were a lot less valuable as they would basically just sort of turn into another sort of low quality force with the name, sort of to give them more the impression they were better troops. But 
essentially the amount of power they've been the same strength as false kind is in terms of you know actual training. <coughs> Never mind, they also lost the distinct false Jäger helmets. I'm basically saying given something more similar to the Luftwaffe troops. In fact, they probably were quality in terms of Luftwaffe troops. Panther still hunting down a skim riding through the artillery. Hellcat down. And these Panthers are also going to be in dire need of repairs. The, the Luftwaffe troops can help with that. Securing a victory point. Panthers containing no from a scheme without support again. Get some infantry. A scheme, come on. Just be nice and do so. We're also seeing butterfly bombs going down, but not entirely sure where. Right there, though. Right, and they are setting them off as they can spot them until they sort of cloak. Fort Amigas could take up position right here at the church wall to deal with the riflemen. Looks like the riflemen are retreating fully into a building. Of course, if those Panthers quickly could retreat, repair, they could be pulled into the fight. And a Hellcat arrives! Oh dear! Will there be Panther support? Yes, one is reasonably repaired and thus is quickly harangued back into the fight. The other Panthers are sort of in trouble as well. Hellcat quickly sends it's going back home. Might be an easy to get those Panther Grenadiers moving again for the Fatherland. Second Panther arrives. And ambushes the escaping Hellcat. Good move. Seven armored kills for this Panther. Absolutely amazing. That's only going to be an ace. Fireflies moving through there. Tanks going up. Kablooey left and right. Not really looking quite good for the Allies. They have the numbers, but not the tactics to really take advantage of those numbers. And their firepower. Oh, again, our scheme has to be careful. He needs something to repair those Panthers, but he keeps rushing them in. And this could actually mean a victory for those Fireflies. Main gun destroyed. Panther down. I repeat, Panther has been brewed up. And a Firefly gets reported knocked out by a brave Panther. But for how long will that last? Pushing on here. Come on, Naturodectus, four rats. More Hellcats. No Pershing as of yet, though. And let's return to Zinago, who's not really gone any further. He's got quite a few resources floating as well. Going for a priest to deliver a sermon to those damnable crowds. Natural Dex is making a move towards that central victory point, perhaps. Well, once more, the Americans are rushing straight for the German base, hoping to knock them out there. Looks like a bear teak has actually arrived for a scheme to perhaps put together some of all those lost. That could work. But the Hellcats are on the prowl. Another flak filling goes down. Back to you a bit exposed. Getting hit in the rear. Panthers are arriving though to try and support it. But will it be enough or will it be too late? And a Hellcat looks like to be going down. Well, that and a Bagger Tiga. Panthers arrive slowly. Lots of artillery looks like a creeping barrage. Hellcats riding through it though. Less than great idea. No, then again, there might be some troubling communication between the two players. And several Hellcats still get knocked out. And arrive just in time to annoy the Fulton Jäger and is right up here in the town square. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Priest got caught by the Panther. There shall be no god for him now. But looks like Tiger finally gets what he wants. Not a Tiger, but a Pershing. 
Though that might not be enough by now. Rather looks like the field has been cleared of most things. And this Panther Support Command is in terrible state. Anyways, Hellcat's getting hunted down. The Panthers rush onwards. Latrodectus giving it all. The Panther Brigade shall succeed. It shall be victorious. Pershing are doing nothing, in fact. That's a bit of a miss. Come on. The enemy's right there. Come on, you can do it, little Pershing. You can do it. And Hellcat, who's trying actually to do some work there, is getting itself ambushed by two Panthers. Losing a strategic location. And it goes out of control, quite tragically. More sappers. Panthers move forward, having cornered the poor Pershing. And the Luftwaffe actually arrives to save the day. The Henschel Panzernaka. This could be the end of the Pershing. If someone could actually hit it, and there we go, Pershing kaput. And looks like that is pretty much what Big Tiger had in him. So let's just beat this up. Another person arrived, but again, I don't think they'll be doing much. Honestly. There's very little left for them to actually do. Fields. Panther does go down, but we are seeing much more. Luft of support. The rest are getting slaughtered, and there we go. Game over. Full retreat from the Allies. And the Panzer Brigade Latodectus makes a smaller move, opening up a fresh gap in the Falaise Gap area. Hopefully, ensuring some more Germans actually escape that chaos. So there you go, do hope you enjoyed this game, and of course, what are the lessons to be learned from this? I mean, the problem here rather was a sort of, from the majority of players except large decks, are sort of bunching up and relying basically on spamming some sort of unit. In this case, for a scheme of a scout cast, which really didn't work for him, lack of infantry, lack of basically a combined arms approach, then he went for Panzer Force, again, not quite working, then Panthers, which again, did, couldn't quite handle either well. And again, that was sort of the other sort of current throughout this, Poor armor tactics. Hellcat, you know, spammed up, huge up, thrown in without tactics. The Ost rushed into armor, hit the front, and got knocked out. In short order, British, lots of sappers got killed, and then fireflies, poor handling, knocked out. And it sort of kept on going like that. So, again, you know, try working on your armor tactics, try working on your armor combined arms approach. You know, just don't just blob up with some, you know, you've just spammed a lot off. And try to be a bit more cautious, you know, also with your defences. But there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe, tell your friends. And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own. This is Imperial Dane, saying cheers.